We begin this Holy Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone, and happy Labor's Day to you. Today, our Mass will be specially dedicated for the sanctification of human labor. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. At this Mass today, we pray for all workers and all those who have retired from active work. We also pray at this Mass for the repose of the souls of Michael Knorr and Tom Walstein. Let us pray. O oh God, creator of all things, who have commanded the human race to bear the burden of labor. Grant that the work we are beginning may, may bring progress in this life and by your favor, advance the spread of the kingdom of Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, Bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with the word of command, with the voice of archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord comes to judge the earth. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all you lands. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. For great is the Lord and highly to be, to be praised. Awesome is he beyond all gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of none, but the Lord made the heavens. The Lord comes to judge the earth. 
Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills its resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then shall all the trees of the forest exult. The Lord comes to Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to roll the earth. He shall roll the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. The Lord comes to Please stand. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling off the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him, and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Is this not the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do here in your native place the things that we have heard, that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a, severe, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of, in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet none of them was cleansed but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Today is Labor's Day. In the American history, it's a day that is dedicated to celebrate, to appreciate the work of all employers in America, those who work in America. A, a tradition that started in the 18th century. 
But this is not unique to the United States. In my country, in Nigeria, every 1st of May is known as Labor's Day or Workers' Day. And the patron saint of workers is Saint Joseph the Walker, the husband of the Blessed Virgin Mary. You can see in his hand, I think that is a hammer and probably a measuring device. That's Saint Joseph right there. He's the patron saint of workers. So on a day like this, Labor's Day, Workers' Day, whatever name you give it, it's a day that we give thanks to God for the work of our hands, for the things you've been able to do, for the works you've been able to do, for those who have retired, for the things you've been able to do before you retired and probably the things you're doing now. And for those who are still in active service, who are still working, Today is the day we say, thank you, Lord, for giving me the opportunity to be able to work, for giving me the opportunity to be able to be productive with my hands. Sometimes it's very easy to take it for granted, but there are people, millions of people across the world who don't have that opportunity to work. Some desire to work, but they don't have the physical capacity or the mental capacity to walk. Some have the mental and the physical capacity to walk, but they don't have the work to do. They don't have the opportunity to do anything. So today, one of the first things we do is we give thanks to God for the opportunity that he has given us or he is still giving us to work. The second thing we do on a day like this is we recognize the dignity of labor the dignity of working. And the dignity of working means that God has given you that opportunity. God has given me that opportunity to work. Some might be working at a very high level, at very top level, at a very professional level. Some may not be professional at all. Some may be the ordinary people that sweep the road, the ordinary so today we are reminded that there is dignity in labor. It doesn't matter where we fall within the spectrum of labor. If you are the high, if you are high up there, good for you, thank God for it. If you are the bottom of the ladder of labor, also be grateful for it. There is dignity in human labor. And this reminds me of something that happened to a marriage recently. Presently, I'm looking at the case. I studied canon law, so I'm looking at the case of annulment. A young man got married very recently. I was invited for the wedding at Baltimore. It's a, it's a Catholic wedding. The wife is a medical doctor at Baltimore, a well-accomplished lady. But the husband does not have formal education. So, I, so during their courtship, I remember him telling me, that father, my wife says what I'm doing is not dignified. She wants me to go back to school to be at the same level with her. And I asked the young man, do you find fulfillment? Do you find satisfaction? Do you see God in what you do? And he said, yes, I'm happy with what I do. So eventually they got married. And issues began in their marriage when the wife compelled this husband to enroll in a college, the time for college began to coincide with his time for work. He was under intense stress. And at a point he told the wife, I can't do this anymore. And as I speak to you today, the husband is here in California. The wife sent the wedding ring and the guy's property at Baltimore down to him that she's done with the marriage. She filed for divorce. In less than a year, both of them got divorced in the, eyes of the, in the eyes of civil law, the law of the society. And now they're in the process of annulment of that marriage. But this tells me something, that there is dignity in labor. There is no need to look down on the type of job other people do. 
the janitors at your place of work, how do you treat them? For those who work in the hospital, those people that are clean and sweep, how do you treat them? They help us, we have to do one or two things for us, how do you treat them? It doesn't matter if you are up there or down there, there is dignity, intrinsic dignity in labor. So today that we celebrate Labor's Day, we are reminded once again to thank God for the work of our hands and to continue to appreciate labor and recognize that there is dignity in human labor. And we pray today that may the work of our hands find favor in the sight of God through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here, nourish the human race with food and renew it with your sacrament. Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift to pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and given thanks. 
broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Salvatore our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Having been made partakers of this table of unity and charity, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that through the work you have given us to do, we may sustain our life on earth and trustingly build up your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, the Mass is ended. Amen. Thanks be to God.